Hello and welcome to Career Talk. I'm Lee Hopper, the CEO at the CCMA and host of this very live show where I chat with contact centre professionals to find out about their career journeys uh, so far and they might be the most senior people in the industry and I've also chatted to some of the most junior people in the industry and every single story is different and so inspiring uh, for wherever you are in your career in contact centres or if you've been thinking about having a career in the contact centre. Um, and what's fascinating through all of the career talks I do is just the very different career paths that people take. Um, and it is really a great place to work. Now, today, I am joined by gold winner of the Contact Centre Manager of the Year for a large operation, Heather Orr, who happens to be the BT Business. I think I've got that right. You work for BT Business and you yes. are the customer support contact centre manager. Welcome, Heather. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you for inviting me and having me. Oh, and an absolute pleasure and massive congratulations for being the reigning champion of the uh, contact centre manager of the year for a large operation. How, how was it for hearing oh. that you were the winner? I think, to be honest, I felt like I had won from the minute that Alice and my manager nominated me. Um, so for me, that was fantastic recognition, not only for me, but actually for my centre. Um, so I was going to the awards to have a really good night. There was lots of our colleagues at the awards. They were up for various awards. So my expectation of winning gold, I have to be honest, I didn't have any. <laughs> um, so when my name was called out um, as the gold runner, I think the first emotion I felt was actually shock. Um, but it was absolutely amazing and, and you know, just so proud to have represented the company and, and it was just amazing to make my family proud as well. So it was it was brilliant, actually. A really good night and just, as I say, shock at, at winning it, but delighted. Oh, do you know what? It's, um, you, you mentioned there it was actually the, when you were told you were going to be nominated or you had been nominated. Yeah. That is um, it's an important emotion that I think you go through. There's winning on the night, but just that very first moment. I think so, because obviously, like, you know, you're in a, a group and your peers and, and I am surrounded by fantastic contact centre managers in my own business. So to be nominated um, and representing BT Business and to get through to the finals, that in itself was actually amazing, you know. So, so yeah, um, even before I went, I was just, I'd say I was just going to have a really good night and enjoy myself, which I thoroughly did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to ask you about that. But no. what I am going to ask you is, so when, once you'd found out that you'd won, and I'm sure you celebrated um, really lovely, and yeah. you went back to, the, to work and you went back home, how has winning really impacted you? Has it made a difference to you as an individual, either at work or at home? I think it has actually. It's, it's funny because we had um, our new customer service director, Vanessa Pele, had just been appointed um, just before the awards. So it was pretty special. The first contact you had with Vanessa, your new director, was to say, well done. So proud of you winning the gold award at the National Contact Centre Awards. Um, but I think what I felt was so many people reached out, people within the people that I worked with but also people in BT that I actually had never had a conversation with and lots of people that maybe I'd worked with over the years that you still have contact with but hadn't spoke to for a very very long time so I think what it has done is raised my profile and and in many ways um, I don't know if credibility is the right word for it but definitely raised my profile within the company and actually externally as well and so so yeah it's, been, it's actually been amazing since winning it and you know it's, it was really it was actually really humbling you know the people that you know reached out after the award and um, just to say well done and just how well deserved it was so it was it was, it was brilliant after it and and you, the process that you go through uh, i know that you speak to judges you have to um that there's there's it's quite a robust judging process that you go through yeah what do you think that they saw in you that yeah. won you gold? And it's a, it's a tough question. But... It is, actually. And, and it's a tough one because, you know, and I've asked myself that question, actually. I would, I suppose... The, obviously, the nomination that Alison submitted, you know, I read it and, and it and it was like amazing nomination. And and I but I hope whenever I had that session with the judges, I hope what they saw was the passion that I have for my people and for the job that I do, because I, I love it. I love doing what I do. And of course, the delivery of the goals that, you know, that we have um, over the year. Um, 
what I have on my site of the highest engaged site in BT business, and that has been consistent for a long time, and even through you know some really tough times over recent years. And I think my favourite part of my job is spending time with people and just in many ways removing that hierarchy and just getting to know people and getting to know you know what motivates them, what makes them tick. So I'm ho- I hope that that came out and they saw that passion. And I think obviously as a team, you know. I've led the team to deliver some superb results, whether that's through our customer metrics or continuous improvement. And I've worked really hard to ensure that the teams feel empowered to challenge, ask questions and ultimately make improvements so that it's easy for our people and our customers. So I guess that's what they may have seen. And as you say, it's, it's a difficult question because, you know, you just I just do my job and you know sometimes you don't actually take a step back and think about what it is that you do and and that made me think about it actually so so I hope that's what they saw whenever they were going through that process uh the judges they 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 spot the, the, the passion absolutely yeah. talk about the passion and they uh, it's one of the things that they all say they love hearing just how passionate people are about not just the organization and the customers but the people the people yeah. piece comes out um yeah. a lot when, when we're talking with with, um, with the judges. So you are a contact centre manager, award-winning contact centre manager. What does that mean? What does your day-to-day role look like? Yeah, so so I look after, as you say, business customer support centre. So it's in the Dairy Lot and Dairy Centre. I have a team of just over 100 people. Um, and what my teams deal with is they're all billing related. So they deal with their small, medium billing customers. Um, it could be via chat, could be via call or WhatsApp. And I also some offline billing teams in my centre. So I suppose as a contact centre manager, what my responsibility is, they're, they're directly linked to our business goals, which starts with ensuring that our customers are supported um, and their issues are resolved. Um, I empower my teams to drive improvements so that they can help make things better for our teams. They are the people who talk to our customers every day, so they know best what those issues are. So it's empowering them to raise those issues and work them through to put a fix in place and put an improvement in place which not only makes it easier for that for the customers but also for them to do their job and that could be a process change it could be a validation it could it could be a wide range um obviously driving for growth adding value to the business but none of that happens without an engaged center so it is always about having the finger on the pulse of how my people are feeling and whether that's the work environment, whether that is the type of issues they're dealing with every day, whether that's their well-being or their development, and always having fun as much as we possibly can while doing that. So so I think that probably sums up and there's in a, as a contact centre manager, there's no two days the same and actually you could be sitting dealing with um you'd be sitting having a lovely your say forum um or an engagement forum and that you could be on a call and the next time talking about efficiencies and improvements and headcount challenges so it just the variety of the work that you do within a contact center it just ranges and they say there's no two days and no two hours of the day actually are the same and interestingly, um, as you're talking there, something that struck me is um, there may be people out there that love working with people. That's what they know that they love doing. They love working with people. Their immediate thinking might be, oh, therefore I need to get into HR. But actually being a contact centre manager, working in the contact centre is a great place to be working with people. You could almost say it doesn't matter what your industry is in terms of what your contact centre managers manage, what your contact centre supports. It is it is people and and you need your people to be on board with you to be engaged to understand to want to do a good job um and that is what you do every single day and it's not always easy um you know because um you know it's it's difficult for people and you know you like to say leave your personal problems at the front door that's not always possible we all know that um so it's not always very straightforward but it is so rewarding and but it's such a large part of of what you do in a contact center either as a center manager or as a first line manager is is having that um, ability to to talk to people um and treat Mm -hmm. people the way you'd want to be treated yourself so um, talk us through some of the projects that you, you're you working on maybe at the moment, maybe some key projects you've had in the last 12, 24 months. What are the kinds of um, projects, programs that, that you work on? Or is it 
just really day to day managing everybody, making sure that BAU is absolutely on fire. Yeah, it is more the day to day. Um, like we have partners, uh, so Billings. Uh, spans across not just my centre but other centres so you're working really closely with those other centres so I lead on billing from an operational point of view so it's making sure that there is a part across from a quality perspective across all the other centres um, like there could be projects for example one of the things that we did not that long ago and I led on it was um, a complete review of attendance patterns um, so and that in you know, a contact centre is like really personal to people the hours they work and the choice that they have and the flexibility that we can offer them so there, there will be ad hoc projects that come along whether it's a new piece of work whether it's something quite quite big like attendance patterns but generally it is just making sure that we are doing the right thing for our customers and that we're there to support our customers and we can resolve those issues there's like our centre leads the way in terms of continuous improvement. Um, so we have a process that we designed actually on site. Um, it's called Delilah. Why, why, why Delilah? So it's just about asking why. It's just about asking why is the customer calling us? Why are we doing it this way? And through that, it's empowered our people to raise so many bugs as we talk about bugs, which may lead to improvements. And many of them do. Um, many of them lead to just a change in training material or actually a full change of process so there's always those improvement bugs that are running constantly and um that's been a fantastic and it was, it was one of my team and one of my managers that actually introduced that that's now been rolled out across um all of business customer support actually um so so it pulls out some of those key projects that our people are working on and then of course i'm supporting them and removing any barriers where i can yeah, uh, do you know what? I love that. And and therefore, being a contact centre manager, you can make change, not just in your department, but you can actually affect change across the entire business. Completely. Yeah, completely. That's exciting. So so in your role, what are the kinds of things that you measure? And, you know, we, we often talk about, I say we often, in the past, it's often talked about that when you're working in a contact centre, every minute, every second of the day is measured. What do you measure? What do you as a contact centre manager look for? Yeah, so at the start of the year, what I do is sit down with my team and we have our strategy and goals. So that is cascaded down from the top, right down from the top. And what we do is create a plan on a page for our delivery for the year ahead. And that keeps us really focused, not only on what we're delivering, but also the detail behind that in terms of what are the actions we need to take as a team and how do we make sure that we exceed those goals. And look, in a contact centre, you can measure whatever you want. So I could be sitting talking about measures all day, but the key ones are how our customers feel, and that's measured through our net promoter score and our customer satisfaction, mm -hmm. our quality and getting it right first time. So that's through repeat contacts and quality and transfers, our sales through service. So making sure our customers are on the right products and making sure that our teams are really clear and aware of what those products are and, and which customers are right for so that they're talking to the right customers about the right products and then of course I talked about continuous improvement so you know are we measured on it to an extent yes but it is more about empowering our people to want to make those changes and of course the engagement of our people so we're, we're measured on our engagement and that's now a quarterly um, survey that um, our people complete. So that's probably the key ones. There's lots of other metrics and measures, but that would be the key ones that we would focus on on, the, on a daily and weekly basis. And, and I think that's that's good for other people to hear. But yeah. um, I know there's lots of other indicators that will feed into those those key measures. Completely. But yeah um, but that that's actually what you care about as contact yeah. center manager that you have to report um, from your center. Yeah. And and I think the 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 other piece that um, you've you've really talked about already on the conversation is your passion for people. Yeah. And the importance of those engagement scores being high, which you've clearly been able to achieve on a consistent basis. What's your approach? How how are you doing that? Not just from an engagement perspective, but giving the people in your teams the opportunities to develop themselves and maybe their own yeah. career paths. 
Yeah, and, and actually our site has become a, a bit of a breeding ground, I think, for some amazing talent who have started with us here. And I feel at times like a proud mother when I go on to calls and hear those guys on there talking about like a product they're launching or something completely different. So we have our own local development program and um, we built that and we review it regularly. And actually anyone who wants within reason can be on that local development program so it's just about developing skills that they want to develop and then we have the business-wide aspiring leaders program and that is for those um for that talent that's probably gone through the local program and are ready for that step up and we have a consistent pool of people who are on that aspiring leaders um and there's lots like being in the contact center environment there's there's lots of different roles so it's not necessarily your straight up hierarchy agent coach manager center manager it could be something within training it could be service enablement it could be hr and that could be where someone sees their their skills lying rather than actually being a center being in a you know, in a contact centre, being a team manager. Um, and that's a massive part of the support mechanism we have within a contact centre. Mm -hmm. So I also have a great range of managers in terms of experience and tenure. So some are here a long time, like me, and some came in as apprentices and are in my team. So we have lots of different experiences within our management team in terms of mentoring talent. So it's important. And what I would say to anyone who you know wants to do something different or if we identify talent is spend time with everybody you know you, you will always see someone that you aspire to be but you will learn so much from every single person and you may take a little bit from one and a little bit from another and then you'll build your own style and your and you, you know you'll, you'll you'll become your own person in terms of what you want to be going forward um so so i think it's just we brought in apprentices. We started an apprentice program some years back. And one of the things I had reduced for those apprentices was a challenge or a goal in that you're coming through the door. And it was the first time actually, whenever we started recruiting those apprentices, it was the first time we'd had external recruitment for a while. So there'd been a lot of us that had been around for a long time. So it was a brilliant opportunity. And what I'd said to each of them coming through the door is, okay, you're coming in here with fresh eyes. I want you to identify an improvement, whether that is a process, something to do with the environment, something to do, you're all going through your training, whatever you think you could change within our business and then they present it back and you know some of those apprentices there's many of them in my team now and gone on to do bigger and better things but it was just that first experience of right you're coming in here new tell us how we can make this better and just empowering them to do that so and then of course like there's local opportunities you know there's different roles within the center so it may not be a higher role so it could be you know sitting within you know we have a resolutions team which take the more complex queries it could be covering coach for a period of time it could be stepping up to do manager so it's just for those guys learning for them what it is they want to do and then it's just putting that support in place and making sure that we can fully support them and make that happen for them I, and I love what you just shared. There are so many occasions where I end up in conversations where, whether it's with parents, whether it's with uh, youngsters coming through who say, oh, yeah, I, I don't know if I want to work in a contact centre, or rather, I don't know what to do. I yeah. don't know what to do. I don't know whether I, what, what I want to do. And actually, they're, they're the ones that working in contact centre is a really good place for them to start yeah. because they get right. to understand a little bit more about themselves That's right. and yeah. what they enjoy. Yeah. And for those apprentices, I think like there's one girl in particular, you know, she did not want university. She didn't want to go to university. So she was able to come in and learn. It was an, at that point, it was an NVQ. So she was able to come in and learn and but and do the job, but also get a qualification at the same time. So it was perfect for her. And actually, she, you know, she's on my team now and she's absolutely superb. Um, so it was it was a great opportunity for people to come in and do that. Now, a moment ago, you touched on the fact that you'd been at BT and in contact centres for quite a while. Yeah. Um, would you like to share how long <laughs> you've been in the contact centre? And then now you've spent your entire career at BT. And uh -huh. um, please also share what you did, what your first role was. Yeah. So I am in BT for 33 years, a um, long time ago. Um, and I started as an operator, um, as it was called then, in director inquiries. I came in part time. I had no intention of making my career in BT and and 
didn't think I'd be here long enough to do that. Um, and for the first few years, actually, I was very happy in that role. Um, I had my two girls when I was very young. Um, I got married and moved up here, so I had my two girls young. And I was quite happy doing that, really enjoyed it, actually. And then I think it was about five or six years later, an opportunity came up, and it was a very supportive manager at that time who encouraged me to apply. And it was a it was a, still a team member role, but it was a promotion. And that turned out to be the best decision I ever made, actually. And that was really the start of my career journey in BT. And I've never really looked back. Um, so that first opportunity was actually into billing, where I've ended up back. But at that stage, it was in BT Group. Um, and that the first step up was into that group billing. It was an area of the business to this day I just really enjoyed working in and had some fantastic mentors and managers. And it was in that space that I moved to my first uh, line manager role and um, I had been covering it for a little while before the opportunity came up and um, so I got my first line manager role and I was in that first line manager role for two weeks when I was asked to step up and cover centre manager wow. um, and then that was at that point called a senior business manager role and look that was a great period of my time a period of my career actually I, you know I look back on it like to this day I just just I, I so loved my job I honestly I had two children at home and there's at times I was tearing myself to go home because I just so enjoyed what I was doing and still do actually but a great at that point you know there were some great experiences in that area and I made some brilliant contacts and actually many of those I worked with in other areas of the business and and stump some actually to this day. Um, so what was it at that time, that that new role, that first line manager role, um, what was it that you enjoyed so much about it? The teams were so, when I look back on it, the teams were, I just really wanted, I just had such an enthusiasm and probably a competitive streak to do a brilliant job. <laughs> um, I wanted to be better than anyone else around me. I wanted our centre to be better even at that very first stage. And the teams, when we look at team sizes now, they're probably between 15 and 18. My team at that stage was 27. Wow. Um, yeah, I had 27 on my team. And I remember even things like we were doing quality checks and you had to do four quality checks on every single person. So like it, it was a hard job and I worked really, really hard. But I had that team performing so well and I was so proud of the team. I remember, you know, we have such a sense of pride and like we were like a, just like a unit. You know, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, of course, I was their late their team leader, but we were just one team, you know, and I, I just rem I, rem I just remember that feeling and some of them are actually still here, believe it or not. Um, and some of my managers at that stage, I, I end up managing them as their manager. So um, but I, no, I just it, it was enthusiasm just to do a better job, make make things better. It was in the credit management area of billing. So what actually was quite a difficult it was quite a difficult job because it was customers that we were speaking to who actually were facing some difficulty. So, you know, it, when I think when I think back on it now, you know, and, and it was quite a difficult job for the guys to do, but they, they did such a great job and we had such a great time doing it actually. How do you think that that role that you did then, apart from um, managing 27 people compared to that role today, albeit that they might be managing 15 to 18 people. How, how do you see that role is different today compared to back then? Or maybe it's it's really similar still. It is probably really similar. I think what our customers expect of us now is much is, is, is different. Um, and yeah. I think we obviously have to react to that. Um, I think things move on and change so much now. Um, I think there's lots and lots and lots of information for people to take in and we have to move, you know, really at speed at times and new products been launched and, you know, so there's, there's a lot more to take in. I don't think now if I look at the teams and think you could not do that with 27 people in your team now, yeah. but at that stage, we may, you know, it's hard to remember back everything about it, but there must have been, I think this, the I think the first line manager role has evolved so much now where it's not just about managing a team of people. There's so many other things those guys do. We've, we talked about continuous improvement, about, if, you know, making things better for our customers and, and all the different metrics we have now. So I think in many ways it's quite similar but I think the demands that have come in now are, are probably greater. And that's what makes it a slightly more difficult role to do now. Interesting. So you were in so you you were in the team leader role for two weeks. Two you weeks, get yeah. A tap on the shoulder saying, Can you look after the rest of the centre while you're yeah. uh, for a while? Yeah. 
How long was it before you actually secured your contact centre manager role? It was just over a year. So the opportunity came up just over a year after that. Um, and I had been covering it. And actually that almost puts more pressure on you because there were quite a few substantive contact centre managers in other parts of Northern Ireland that had applied for it at that stage. And I remember thinking, gosh, you know, they're going to have lots of experience. So I remember feeling quite a bit of pressure on me to get the job. And I just so wanted the job. But thankfully, I did, uh, you know, secured the role. And and I've been in a contact centre manager role ever since. Now, it has varied. Um, mm-hmm. So the work that we do here on site has changed significantly. So we were billing at that stage. I can't, I, I, I can't remember the order, but we were consumer for a period of time. Um, we looked after BT Ireland, which involved me having a team in Dublin as well as here. Um, when I was in consumer, I looked after another centre as well in Eskillen. Um, and then we moved back to business. I went to Glasgow and looked after Glasgow for almost a year. And, and now, you did that. You, you were telling me earlier that you um, looked after Glasgow and you stayed there Monday to Thursday every yeah. day, every week. Yeah, um, and you've got children. Was, was yeah. that when they were young? Or, no, they were a little bit. They were actually. Do you know? It actually worked quite well because one of them was at university in Glasgow at that time, so it actually worked out quite well. But it, it wasn't that whenever I said yes to the job, and then it turned out that way. Um, but that was it. That was actually quite a challenge because I was looking after my own centre as well as Glasgow. But I had a really yeah. good, strong team here, so I was able to do that remotely. But I had to spend most of my time in Glasgow for that period of time. But but again, that's a, that was more variety. So it was still a contact centre manager role, but it was a great variety and and. It, it stretches you to do something a little bit different as well, where you have a, a different team around you. So I've built this team up. I've recruited every single person that I have within my team, where you're going in inheriting a team in another centre. So it's a, it's a it's just a slightly different um, role to take on there. And have you ha- therefore had, I mean, you, you clearly love the job that you're in. You clearly love being in the contact centre manager role. Ha- have you wanted to climb the ladder? Have you... Um, have the opportunities presented themselves to you? Oh, completely. Because the opportunities, even at the very start, going back even you know fifteen years, there were there were numerous opportunities at that point actually for me to do more um, and to climb yeah. the ladder. And I did I I did consider it, and I do I still cover and and I, I've covered probably every boss I've had, and. <laughs> But actually, you know, at that point, um, the girls were younger and yeah. um, it's not now, it's much easier now because we've hybrid work and, you know, everything's done over teams. Um, but then it wouldn't have been and it would have meant quite a bit of travel. And, and I made my choice, actually, that the fa- being at home with the family probably meant more than being away for long periods of time during the week. And I've actually thought about it quite a bit recently and you know, if I was to look at it overall, I have no regrets. I love doing what I'm doing. The variety and the size of the company that BT is and being able to move about the company meant that I, even though I was still a centre manager, what you were doing completely changed because it was different products, it was different centres, it was different people. Um, so if I had stopped loving my job, then I would have looked elsewhere. But I, but while I enjoy doing what I'm doing, um. I, I have stayed doing what I'm doing actually. So the temp- the the opportunities were there. I just made my choice. Uh, I, I didn't take them actually. And, and I think it's it's interesting when you're in your well, I, at least I'm going to draw on my own experiences. When you're in your twenties, you're firing up for that yeah. that, that climbing yeah. that ladder. You want to be the top of the tree as quickly as you can yeah. get there. But but I I'm so aware of people that are my age and some that are a little bit older than me that actually they, they the happiness of the job and the job satisfaction overrides that, the, the yeah. desire to climb a ladder. Yeah, and that's how I feel actually. Yeah. yeah, and it's not that I love you know and I will take on something you know over and above what I do and look for that actually. But in terms of the job I do, I, I love doing the job I do so. Um, I'm very happy staying where I'm at. Oh, and and do you know what you? I, one of the reasons why I wanted to ask you a little bit more about what you do in the day to day is because you've just got bags of experience in it, and clearly being award winning, you you know what you're doing. But um, what have been throughout your thirty 
three-year career. What have been your, um, and, and that's just so far, I know you've got a long, long way to go yet, but what have been your greatest achievements in that time? I find this a really tough question, actually, because um, there's there's been so much. Um, I think what I'm most proud of is the culture that I've created here on my site. Um, and I think that, you know, there's many senior leaders come and go and you have lots of director visits uh, and managing director visits and everyone that comes through the door of this centre um, complements the culture, the wall of noise, the enthusiasm, the engagement. So I think overall, and, that, and that's not something that just appears, that's something that you build and you create. So that and the engagement and the sense of pride actually that the team have here in their centre and the work that they do, that is probably what I would say is my greatest achievement. And, you know, winning the gold award is the result of those achievements. Um, and where I've had, you know, many much recognition over the years, I think that award also, but was particularly special because what you've been doing there has been benchmarked against the rest of the industry. So that was a bit of an eye opener. So I suppose the achievements that got me to that, as opposed to that being the achievement. Yeah, I, and I, do you know what? I think that's that's actually spot on. And yes, winning a gold is is wow. But actually, you get there because of what you've achieved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so who who's inspired you along the way? Oh, there's been so many inspirational leaders over the years, and and indeed, probably many people who weren't leaders. But do you know, I think my biggest strength is my communication and and, and how I deal with people. And I and honestly, that's come from my dad. Um, he was a very understated man, but he had a great and fantastic way of communicating with people, and spotting where things just weren't right with no fuss. Uh, so I think in many ways that's probably where I learned my trade, and that's where I've yes. taken my inspiration from over the years. And he was not in this industry at all um but if i think on what i do and how you do it i think that's where my inspiration has come from actually it's from my dad oh do you know what you've brought it lump to me throat that's so <laughs> lovely. that's so lovely oh and and but did he was he the person that gave you the best advice you ever received or maybe someone else did oh he gave me lots of advice um i, I bet he but... did just trying <laughs> to talk about him i bet he did but i think honestly the i remember uh someone said to me at one point it was after a long discussion um about something that happened in my center and he said to me don't defend the indefensible <laughs> and i remember that and i think you could also interpret that as pick your battles yeah. so i think probably that's the best advice i've been given so i've changed that rather than don't defend the indefensible to pick your battles um because um there's many battles that you could go down but just pick your battles um if and that's in life as well as as a contact centre manager actually so in all so you've been a contact centre manager for roughly 25 yeah, years yeah 20, 20, 25 years yeah 25 years um throughout that time what do you wish that you had learned 25 years ago that you now know i look back you know and i think probably most people do and experience makes us a lot wiser and sometimes I cringe at some situations and think how did I ever manage my way through that I think I've got better at accepting that my opinion or option maybe isn't always the right one <laughs> and accepting that quicker and I suppose having a strong team with very diverse skills around me helps me come to that realization so I think that probably would have helped me in my younger days is just um I think I, I do. I always listened, but I think expect accepting that, that maybe my way is not always the right way. Um, I think I probably could have learned that a bit sooner. <laughs> That's me opening up. <laughs> my, team, my team would have a laugh if they were listening to this. <laughs> You know, I know people that know me that would think, oh, I hope Lee's listening to that as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? This has been so good and, and I could keep talking to you, but I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions. Are okay. you ready? Yeah, really. Okay, red or blue? Blue. Right. Obviously, BT. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Although I am a red, but blue. For <laughs> um, cats or dogs? Dogs. Oh, have you got one? I did have one for a long time. I have two grand doggies now. So my daughter has dogs, so they're my grand doggies. So I have Alfie and Aston, which Aww. come very regular. But yeah, I love dogs. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Do, do you, are they big dogs, little dogs? Little dogs. Little white fluffy dogs. Oh, sweet. <laughs> sweet. And my last question, if you were to write a book, what would it be about? 
Um, probably who it would be about. I'm a massive Manchester United fan, have been for so many years. So probably Alex Ferguson, a man that I've admired since I was a little girl, actually, as long as I remember watching football. And that probably comes from my dad as well. So Alex Ferguson, um, I think, is who I would write a book on, yes. Thank you so much, Heather. It has been an absolute delight and pleasure ch chatting with you. Again, congratulations on winning gold. Thank you, Lee. Thanks very much. Thanks so much. And hey, if you want to listen to any more uh, editions of Career Talk here at the CCMA, please do go ahead and visit ccma.org.uk. There's a lot more there. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you soon.